All right. What is up, my peeps? Joshua Smith here with another GSD Mode Podcast Weekly Real Estate Tip. And today I'm here to talk about interest rates, mortgage interest rates here in the real estate business. What the hell is going on with them? We're seeing a lot of crazy stuff. They're really vo very volatile right now. Um, as of the time of me recording this, it is February 16th, 2023. In under two weeks, we've seen about a 76 basis point hike. They seem like they are continuing to go up. So, you know, what's going on with them? How high can these things get? You know, wh where are they going to go? Are they going to go up? Are they going to go down? And the reason why I wanted to create this video today is, is uh, just to share some education on how mortgage rates actually work. You know, a lot of conversations that I'm having with realtors um, is that, you know, most uh, well, realtors, team leaders, broker owners, is most in the real estate industry have no idea you know, how mortgage rates even actually work. And sometimes even lenders that I talk to don't don't know how they work. So this becomes really important, right? Because if, if some lenders don't know, and, and, and if most of the real estate industry doesn't know, then, you know, we know that most of the consumer probably has no idea. So it's important to have this education so we can prep and plan and know what to watch for and, and how things are going on our end. Um, but then we can go out there and educate our clients that much more on what's going on. You know, um, like this last week, I heard one of my agents in my team meeting, you know, talking to uh, one of her objections were or was, uh, uh, you know, buyer clients are like, well, I want to wait till the summer for interest rates to come down. You know, a lot of this uh, uh, potentially wishful thinking, you know, right. And this is things I'm hearing all the time in our industry, right, is, oh, well, you know, interest rates are going to get down to 5 percent, you know, da, 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 da. and then I, you know, start peeling back the onion layers and asking, well, what leads you to believe that? You know, what intel do you have that suggests that that is going to take place? And, and what I find is it typically is just wishful thinking, right? So, so at a high level, um, and I'm going to get in and show you guys some graphs and some charts that I check each and every single day. I know that a lot of you listen to this podcast on iTunes or Google Podcasts or so forth. Um, uh, so I'll do my best to explain these these websites and these graphs that I look at on a daily basis. You know, but again, the more education that we can have on this, the more effective that we can be. You know, just again, prepping, planning, preparation, um, but then also educating our clients and so forth. So the first thing is to understand that mortgage rates have very little directly to do with the Federal Reserve rates right so when you when you and i'm not saying they don't impact them um, um but it's not a direct impact so a lot of people will sit there and hear that okay jerome powell the federal reserve is continuing rate heights that's impacting mortgage rates making mortgage rates go up making mortgage rates go, you know whatever that may be um and that's just not truly the case you know so so to illustrate an example of this if we look at the beginning of 2022 um, uh, we started seeing mortgage interest rates going up about a half a percent so 50 basis points on a monthly basis, so we saw interest rates double before the Federal Reserve even started going through their rate hikes. How is that possible, right? Well, then let's go back to how the hell interest rates got so damn low during you know, 2020, 2021, early 2022 um, was due to the fact that you had the Federal Reserve coming in and buying insane amounts of, of mortgage-backed securities and also buying an insane amount of U.S. Treasury bonds, right? So when we look at the, the direct thing that sets mortgage rates is mortgage-backed securities, but also Treasury bonds have a big impact on mortgage-backed security purchases. So I want to explain this so you guys can really understand this, right? Um, and again, we're going to get into graphs and, and things that I'm paying attention to on a daily basis where I track this, watch this, and so forth. You know, so, okay, we have this, you know, 100-year, you know, pandemic crisis going on, state of an emergency, Federal Reserve felt it was the right thing to do, you know, to come in there and start buying insane amounts again of, of T-bills, treasury bonds, um, and as well as mortgage-backed securities to the extent that they were buying about $90 billion a month of mortgage-backed securities. You know, so when people talk about, okay, interest rates getting back to where they were, look, you know, um, uh, the probability of that happening is probably pretty low. I don't want to say it's impossible because it happened. It did happen, right? It happened once, um, um, but we've never seen interest rates you know, on the mortgage level, you know, that low. And and the probability of it again happening again is is very very low, unless you know something insane happens. You know, um, um, another you know, hopefully it doesn't take place, but another you know hundred year pandemic that we just saw something crazy where where it's a massive state of emergency where. You know, the Federal Reserve believes that they have to do something like that to save the economy, you know, and, and so forth. So, again, I mean, those are things that, you know, I, I hope that don't take place again. So when we look at that, and this is why, you know, when you hear, you know, a lot in our industry, they're saying, OK, interest rates really aren't that high today. 
um, what's going on if you look at historic interest rates. Um, but the reason why it's becoming such a problem today is because you know, the low interest rate environment and pumping, you know, so much money in the economy and, and a lot of different factors, you know, cheap capital to institutional investors, you know, and so forth. There was so many people swallowing up so much real estate that became so much demand, you know, for real estate. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat's going out on me here. Um, uh, uh, you know, if we look at a nationwide level last year, there was a 34% drop in transaction volumes, a 34% less demand of people willing and able to buy real estate in 2022. That appears to be going up here in 2023. You know, so we had just this crazy spike of, 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 you know, demand from a lot of different, for a lot of different reasons of buying so much damn real estate, you know, and it, and it just escalated up prices. So now we are at all time low affordability when it comes to real estate. So when you got, you know, real estate prices. At, at peak prices ever, you know, we're coming out of the biggest real estate bubble of all time. Then, then you, you, you know, get interest rates at a typical basic kind of, you know, decent, healthy level. Well, then that creates a climate where it's extremely unaffordable, you know? Um, so again, you had the, the central bank buying about $90 billion a month for about two years straight of mortgage backed securities, plus buying a bunch of us treasuries. So T uh, bills, that we're just suppressing those late rates way down where they are fit artificially low, right? So you got to understand and know that the Federal Reserve cannot make a profit. Anything that they make, even though they're a private institution, at the end of the year, they have to hand over that profit to the U.S. Treasury. So they'll go out there and buy shit that nobody else will buy, you know, right? That, that Wall Street won't buy. So when it comes to, okay, how are interest rates set at as a whole? They're set on mortgage-backed security purchases. So essentially, you know, investors on Wall Street, if you will, um, coming in, buying mortgage-backed securities, uh, uh, so buying these bonds um, that then, and based on those bids and based on the demand for those bonds, you know what they're willing to pay for those bonds. The 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 more that um, you know the, that dictates the rates. So so if investors are like, okay, the economy is kind of sketchy, you know, if if there's other assets that they can go out there and purchase, aka T bills, Treasury bonds. That are more lucrative, that are paying higher yield rates. There's going to be less demand to buy mortgage-backed securities, and it's going to drive up these rates, which is exactly what we're seeing right now. Okay, so let me actually get into. I want to show you guys some graphs here because this will illustrate, um, you know, some some good examples for you with this. Okay, so uh, the first thing that I check each and every day, um, yeah, or at least Monday through Friday, because you know markets are only up on Monday through Friday. But I come in here. This is just CNN.com forward slash markets. So, um, uh, you know, and, and you've got what's going on with the stock market, you know, not that I really pay a whole lot of attention to this, I do track it, because obviously, you know, all of it impacts the whole here when it comes to the real estate business, you know, but this is has, you know, this isn't what I'm looking at for for on a daily basis for mortgage rates, I'm scrolling down here. And this is what I'm looking at. So you see where it says bonds and rates. So in those that are listening to this, what I'm looking at right now is is what's going on daily with uh, U United States Treasury bonds. And primarily, for whatever reason, um, um, and you can go study the history of this, you know, the 10-year Treasury bond, you know, seems to be the biggest competitor of mortgage-backed securities. So when these are up, like today, these are up, right? And these have been going up consistently for a little bit of time. This is what then, so when these are going up like they are today, right? Um, that is going to take away from mortgage-backed security purchases. There's going to be more demand for investors to buy these treasury bills, um, these T bills, if you will, you know, kind of market lingo T bills, you know, versus these mortgage backed securities. So it's going to drive up the rates of mortgage rates um, to make it more lucrative then um, to create demand for, the, for those investors on mortgage backed securities. So every day I come in here and when I see, okay, well, if these are, these are up, then I come right over here and there's a bunch of these different sites. You don't have to go to CNN.com forward slash markets in um, or Mortgage News Daily um, that I go to here, but here's where I go to, to see rates. Now, these aren't today's rates, but based on this, well, this is rates as of this morning, um, but with what's going on right now, these are going to go up, you know, right? The, these are what the rates were set uh, as of yesterday afternoon based on mortgage-backed security purchases at a 30-year fixed here at 6.75%, right? The reason why I like Mortgage News Daily um, is I can come on here and not just see the 30 year fix, 15 year fix, 30 year jumbo, 5 1 arm, um, you know, 30. It, I mean, it gives all of that. It's got a good mortgage calculator as well, but it also tells me what's going on with mortgage backed security bids for that day. So you can see here, mortgage backed securities today are, are you know, down. They're weak, if you will, in those bids, um, uh, which is having a negative impact on rates, 
right? And is driving is going to drive these rates up, right? Um, so then again, if we come over here, but we can see that these treasury bills, especially this 10-year treasury, those rates are up. So as of right now, they're 3.847. So that is an increase over yesterday. And these can this the higher this figure goes, the higher that um, uh, you know mortgage rates uh, uh, will go, right? So just to put that in the context. So if we look at, let me actually switch back over to this graph so we can see the, this 10-year treasury figure and I'll kind of highlight this here. So in 2020, so uh, uh, the average 10-year yield, so the percentage rate on a 10-year treasury bond in 2020 was 0.89%. 2021, the average was 1.45%. Now, 2022, it was 2.95%, but we opened the year at 1.63%, and then it's sort of driving up from there, right? Um, so you can see, okay, well, you had you know these treasury bills at 0.89% in 2020, you know, versus 3.845% today, you know, no wonder interest rates were so damn low, right? So what is driving up? Oh, well, let me just share one other stat with you guys here. If I have it here, um, thought I had it written down somewhere here. But if you remember back on, I believe it was October and somewhere in October, I think it was October 24th, uh, uh, when we saw interest rates peak last year um, at about 7.24, 7.25%. You know, on um, that ten-year Treasury, and I thought I had it written down, but I guess I, I, I don't hear my notes. Um, but that that uh, uh, tr that ten-year Treasury note was above four percent. You know, right? So it spiked that up. So what's going on here? And and so so what what's driving these Treasury bills up? You know, right? Like what 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 what's going on globally that's creating this demand? Well, you got two things. You know, again, as we said earlier, uh, um, you know, the last couple of years, so 2020, 2021, and even through 2022, you had the Federal Reserve buying up U.S. Treasuries. So there was, you know, they were one buyer of, of other buyers for these U.S. Treasuries. The, this federal government or the Federal Reserve isn't the only buyer. Obviously, they have the open markets and so forth. Now, the Federal Reserve is, is um, um, you know, trying to liquidate their balance sheet now if you will, um, shrink their balance sheet, if you will, through this quantitative tightening process currently. Now, they supposedly have been on this track, you know, for the last year plus time frame, but that hasn't really been the case because they're trying to manufacture this soft landing and not, you know, have the markets crash. So they've been still doing some back end manipulation and stepping in when, when needed, you know, so they haven't been fully, you know, sticking 100% to this quantitative tightening, you know, kind of liquidation um, um, process. You know, but as of right now, and if we go to the Federal Reserve's website and look at, so this is showing on the Federal Reserve's website, their holdings of U.S. Treasury securities, like you can see, like where this peaked. So in 2022, I mean, they were still buying, you know, because what we happened, and if you guys remember in 2022, I can't remember the date, but there was a date where there was a no bid day on mortgage-backed securities and the markets kind of freaked out, right? The, like that means like, no, there was zero buyers on Wall Street for mortgage-backed securities. So the Federal Reserve stepped back in, started buying, you know, a lot of this debt again, you know, so you can see here through 2022, you know, this kind of peaked what in about uh, uh, May of, of 2022. Um, but then you can see if you look at this this graph, and those are, are are you know driving down the road and not watching this. You know this graph is just showing you know where it peaked here in 2022, and then has been on a steady decline. You know of of so you can see that they're you know at least currently, um, at least from what they're showing us and telling us that they're not buying these treasury bills right now. So then that means that the open market has to go out there and buy treasury bills. So when you have the Federal Reserve not buying mortgage-backed securities and not buying these treasury bonds, then that then the market's going to do what the market's going to do, right? Meaning these are going to kind of be set now by the market. And it's been a long time. It's been about 15 years since we've been able to really see what the markets are doing on their own without all of this manipulation and, and stimulus, you know, stimulus and monetization of debt and, 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 and you know, money printing. You know, I mean, the Fed's, you know, blowing up their balance sheet, what, $9 trillion, you know, in the last 15 years. You know, so it's been crazy stuff, you know, right? So now we're seeing at least for some some time. I don't know if the, this is why when I say, okay, hey, our rate's going to be 10% this year. Well, it could be, right? We're going to find out. We're, we're going to see what the market's set for based on with what shit's going on right now with the global economy and our economy here locally. Um, I mean, national economy, I should say. Um, but then how, how strong is the Federal Reserve going to stick to their guns with allowing you know, quantitative tightening to take place. Like meaning, are they going to actually 
for, for the last 15 years, for the first time in 15 years, allow markets to do what the markets are going to do. All right, so what's going on globally right now that's impacting these treasury bills, right? Um, and what's driving these up right now is you have China, you have Japan, you have a lot of countries within the EU having to liquidate. So they're selling off their treasuries, whether it's they have to or they're choosing to, like with China right now, we're kind of in this cold war with China, um, um, a business, you know, economic war, if you will, with them. You know, if you're paying attention at all to that, you know, so you have all these other countries that are there. Uh, so not only do we have people not necessarily buying these at, at, at you know, uh, 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 the rate that they have been in the past, you have all these other countries selling these off to to the magnitude of about one hundred billion dollars a month of U.S. Treasury bill sell offs. Right. Well, this is United States debt. Right. So this has to be resold. So then they got to go out there and find a buyer for it. And if there's not enough buyers to sell that debt. They got to keep driving up these rates because they have to sell these, right? Um, um, obviously, our government's broke, right? So um, uh, they have to go out there and sell these. Um, and, and, and again, the Federal Reserve could come back in and buy these. I don't know what all the regulations are, if the U.S. Treasury Department can, can buy them or not. But as far as the open markets, you know, right, they got to keep driving these up. So when you have right now on a global scale, we have all these other countries selling these off. Um, and we don't have the Federal Reserve kind of backstopping this to practice yield curve control, if you will, um, to manipulate the markets. You know, these these are continuing to go up. Um, and this is why we've seen this crazy, you know, 76 basis, basis point hike in. So interest rates, um, not this past Friday, but the Friday before. Right. So that that is what um, under, you know, just under two weeks. We're at five point nine nine percent right now. As of this morning, they're six point seven five percent. They'll be higher than that by the end of today. Based on the actions that we're seeing, you know, um, um, you know, so if this continues, maybe another week they're at seven percent and so forth, you know, um, um, and and then from there, what do they go? It's nobody's, it, 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 it's anybody's guess, you know. Um, uh, we don't know. We don't know where this is going to go, how this looks, how this, you know, um, you know, when I hear people saying, okay, interest rates are going to go down to five percent, I'm like, okay, you know, maybe. I, I I may have all of a sudden we have, you know, because what would it take for that? Either the Federal Reserve steps in and starts buying insane amounts of of of, of this debt again which they're saying that they're not going to do. So we'll see if they change you know, their plan, their game plan, change course there. Um, um, that would also then take you know, some of these other countries to quit selling off that debt and then more demand of purchasers buying that debt. You know, um, the other thing to take into account here, you know, when we look at this, is, is you know, this yield curve is massively inverted right now, um, um, you know, which, which indicates that we are going into a recessionary time frame. You know, and I'm not going to get too much into that. You can go out there and, and do your own Google searches on yield curve inversions and, and history with yield curve inversions and, and recessions and what that means, you know, and so forth. Um, um, but with all the moving parts that are taking place today, you know, it doesn't look good for me personally, from all the, you know, from my understanding, all the research due diligence that I'm doing, the KPIs that I'm looking at, you know, this appears to, you know, because again, without outside manipulation um, um, with this. Right. Um, so if we just let the economy do what the economy is going to do, you know, it appears that this is going to continue to rise. This is going to continue to go up, which is going to um, continue to weaken the, the you know, uh, mortgage backed security purchases. Right. Because this is considered you got to understand when it comes to Treasury, these U.S. Treasury bills, this is kind of considered classified as risk free. You know, this is kind of your risk free and risk free rate is what it's referred to in in you know, the investment world, right? Um, um, and the reason why that is, is, okay, the, the chances, the last person or the last entity that's going to go under and go bankrupt is going to be, you know, meaning that you're not going to get your money back is going to be the U.S. The, the US government, you know, because they, they have access to the money printer, they can figure this stuff out. So the likelihood of, let's just say these mortgage-backed security purchases, the likelihood of those going into foreclosure and investors losing their shirt on those mortgage-backed securities is much higher than them getting paid, um, you know, uh, back the interest rate and getting paid back on their money on investing in the U.S. government's debt. You know, right? If you just look at this, and hey, look, I get it. The U.S. government is, you know, the the, you know, debt continues to climb. I know that, uh, uh, you know, the debt ceiling now needs to be raised. I get all of that. 
Um, but when you look at this, if you look at just from a risk assessment standpoint, this right here on these mortgage are these these U.S. Treasury bonds is a hell of a lot less risky than buying mortgage-backed securities. Even though historically mortgage-backed securities outside of the Great Financial Crisis, you know, been a, a, a less risk-reverse investment versus like you know going into the equity markets and, and so forth. You know, but it, it just becomes a risk calculation. You know, right? Um, but the more that these get driven up, which again, every KPI out there with that, what's going on globally. What's going on with the economy here nationally and what's especially what's going on globally um, and with our current monetary policy with the Federal Reserve, this appears it's going to continue to drive up, which will potential, you know, continue to drive up interest rates. So, you know, people tell me, oh, interest rates are going back down to 5%. The only reason that they started getting back down that low again is because you had manipulation. You had the Federal Reserve jumping back in. You had manipulation in the markets taking place again that created this artificial interest rate. You know that that it's not it's not a real interest rate set by the markets. I guess is what I'm trying to say. So we're going to see where this goes. Like, hey, maybe they go back down to five percent. Like, okay, like you know, the Federal Reserve and the U.S. government and whatever they like. It's not like they don't have a strong history of insane, you know, uh, 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 manipulation with the markets. You know, right? Um, but then also, I wouldn't be surprised if if they continue sticking to their guns right now with the Federal Reserve. Um, if interest rates, you know, before the end of this year don't get up to eight, nine, maybe even ten percent, we'll see. It's yet to be seen. And all this stuff has happened before. You know, right? It's all happened historically. It's all happened before. It can happen again. Um, um, nobody knows. Nobody has a crystal ball. But at least now you know what to pay attention to. Um, each and every day, and you have some education on this. So then that way, you know, you can keep a pulse on this and what's going on and, and adapt accordingly within your own business. Um, but then from there, you can also, you know, go through, go out there and uh, be able to educate your clients, you know, better on this. So like when I have a client right now, that's like, oh, I want to wait till this summer for interest rates to come down. You know, I'm like, look, the, the I mean, that's a coin toss in the air. That's just wishful thinking. That's a coin toss in the air. Right now, let's see, because they could also equally with that coin toss, go up and be much higher, right? So here's what we know today. Here's where the current rates are at. Here's what's available today. Um, here's the options that we can do today with different loan products. Here's the options that we can do with, let's just say it's a conventional buyer, 20% down conventional buyer. I can go get them a 9% you know, rate buy down um, um, uh, you know, because they can get a 9% seller concession. So whether we use some of that for actual closing costs, then we use you know, maybe it's two or 3% for closing costs. We use five to 6% for rate buy down. You know, there's options to go out there and work with this. You know, but again, it, it's a coin toss in the air. So I'm going to be more proactive. But number one, educate them on that so they can make their own best decisions for themselves. I'm not trying to push or force clients to do anything that they don't want to do or don't feel comfortable doing. But for somebody who said that I'm going to wait this summer, you know, um, um, until these rates go down, like, look, you guys, on a global scale, and I'll end with this because, you know, this, this is maybe a topic for another time. Um, uh, but we have a massive uh, a demography problem, like meaning I, I say the United States and a couple other countries boomers here in the like okay we'll use the united states as an example boomers had a lot of kids they had the millennial generation you know right almost every other country on this planet did not do that so we have a massive you know when people talk about overpopulation being a problem it's actually the opposite we have a massive problem with the shrinkage of overall global population you know because people are having such less kids you look at china china is the fastest aging civilization in recorded history their one child policy amongst other things just worked too well um to the point where it might be to the point of no return where they you know i mean there is projected by 2050 that their population is going to be cut in half you know so so when you have less people especially as you know boomers are entering retirement boomers have been the main you know, the, the main financial earners uh, uh, for a long time now, now that they're all entering retirement, you know, they're obviously not making money. Um, um, they're moving their investments into less risky investments, you know, moving out of equities and the bonds and so forth. So there's just going to be a lot less capital. There's a lot less people that are willing to make stuff, a lot less people that are willing to buy stuff, a lot less capital in the markets and so forth. You know, um, plus with money getting sucked out of the markets right now with what central banks are doing throughout the world, you know, um, that then creates a higher interest rate environment. You know, um, uh, when you have the population growth, when you have year over year constant, you know, GDP growth, expansion, when things are just growing, growing, expanding, expanding, you got more people being born, more people buying stuff, more people creating stuff, and it just continues more, 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 things are continuing to expand, you know, you can get away with a low cost of capital, so a low interest rate environment, you know, um, but now we're going to, we're having the opposite of that, you know, which, which, um, 
you know, it may it will make sense then if we go into a higher cost of capital environment, meaning money's going to cost more money. You know, your credit cards will be uh, interest rates will be higher, mortgage rates will be higher. All you know, debt that businesses are going, you know, funding for businesses, all of this stuff. Now we'll see. You know, we'll see how all this plays out, man. The, the stuff's beyond me, beyond my control. You know, and so forth. All I can do is is you know ha have you know keep myself educated on it, um, and then watch it and pivot, shift, and adapt accordingly. You know, with that. Yeah, you know, I talk to realtors all the time. I'm like, look, like if you want to make consistent income in your business, now month over month consistent income comes down to your your, you know, obviously your strategy, but then consistent habits of execution on that strategy, day over day, week over week, and so forth. That keeps that steady income coming in month over month, so you don't have that roller coaster. Well, then when it comes to year over year, um, a consistent steady income and consistent steady growth that really comes down to your ability. Now, of course, you got to have strategy, habits, all of that. That's the given now, you know, right? But in addition to that, you also have to have the ability to read markets and adapt accordingly, right? Because real estate's always good for somebody. Transactions are always taking place, always has, always will, you know, right? There's no such thing as a good market or a bad market. The market's always good for somebody. So we have to have the ability to go out there, shift and adapt and pivot accordingly. Now, if you don't know how to do that, I highly recommend that you go to gsdmode.com, um, which is you know the, my website, my, my main kind of hub for this podcast website. On there right now, I have a free training, which is six steps to 3x or more your real estate business in the next 12 months, regardless of the real estate market. So that shows it doesn't matter if the market's a boom, bust, crash, anything in between, how to go out there and how I've been able to for 18 years straight now continue to grow scale, whether it's been the two biggest you know booms that are our, our markets have ever seen between 2005 and 2020 and 21, and I guess early 22, depending on where your market, where you're, you know, all markets are kind of doing different things right now. But those are the two biggest bubbles that we've seen historically with real estate. I've also been through the biggest crash, uh, uh, real estate housing crash in recorded history through the great financial crisis and been able to grow and expand my business regardless. And it's not because I'm somebody special. It's because I know how to read markets, right? And I've had great mentors and people that have helped me be able to do that, that, you know, I've, I've learned from those that kicked ass before me, you know, right? And, and you know, what does Tony Robbins say? Stand on the shoulders of giants, you know, right? Um, um, but in that, that three-hour in-depth online training at gsdmode.com, I go through what I found to be the, the six fundamental steps that allow you to consistently grow, scale, and expand regardless of what's going on in the marketplace. So anyway, I hope that you guys have found this helpful. Um, hopefully this you know helps uh, uh, on, on having to understand what's going on with mortgage, interest rates, and so forth. Keep crushing it. Keep kicking ass. And I will talk to you soon. Peace.